cowardly organisation, you consistently advertise and promote your markets and your betting, and then you don't take bets. You. Sorry. Fuck. Got distracted. <laughs> Fuck. I'm so angry about it. Well, there's the intro. Da -da -da. Welcome to the deep dive. Uh, we're at Betfair HQ. I'm with Pistol Pete Anthonis, who's back, Anthony Snoozeness, and uh, this is powered by punningform.com.au, the number one database in racing, Pete. We're going to go through, we're not going to talk about the narrative, we're not going to talk about twilight meetings or if it affected us or if it didn't affect us, because if they bet on at 7am at Flemington, we would probably find a way to get there and bet. I don't really care at all about twilight, and I'd rather if you didn't talk about it either, because it's all I've heard on the way in to here, and it's frustrated me greatly. You know I want much. to talk about what the horses actually did <laughs> to the data, to the numbers, and I, will look, I, want, I really want to look at what the betting did, because there's a lot of interesting moves on Saturday at Flemington, and a lot of them were wrong. It was fascinating, wasn't it? Considering yeah. it was twilight, there was a lot of vampires out there just trying to suck the blood out of the market. Yeah, there, was, so there was some like, huge drifters, yeah. and big, big goes, oh. and not a lot lobbed. Yeah. Okay, so race three, Peter, Alabama Express, they went 6.3 slow to the 600, all average benchmark. Please elaborate and explain what that exactly means for the punter at home, because yourself, Sugar Shane, Shane Baker, the man behind punting form will get upset when I just say 6.3 slow, because it's actually- It's even slower. Slower than that. So at punting form, you've got two different options. You can go according to the class. Which, which you're, is, you're a bit of a class man. I am a class man. I'm an all average man. Yeah, so if you're an all average man, you're comparing that race to every other race that punting form's analyzed over the journey. It doesn't matter the distance, the track, they combine them all, compare them back to a one standard figure. But if you go off the class, it's even slower. So I'm a bit simpler than you. Uh, I like to deal in both. I like to keep yeah. it real simple. Yeah, yeah. Kiss. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so if we go class, uh, that's it's 11.2 lengths slower than the class. So that's saying for an open three-year-old race over the 1100 at Flemington. So they've gone very slow. Extremely slow. And for the horse to do what it's doing now on your little screen to Ooh. gap them like he did, and that's it wasn't a horrible race. But like Banco's a, a proper horse. It was very competitive yep. and won during the Flemington Carnival. It's gapped these horses. Uh, I thought it paraded heavy and will definitely improve. We're going to talk about that on another show we're doing for Betfair coming up after this. Um, it was heavily backed though, Alabama Express. We took a little bit, or a good, as much as you were able to take on Thursday or yep, Wednesday. It was Thursday. We had plenty of time to dive through and look at this meeting at Flemington because they abandoned the Caulfield meeting. Um, we took around $7.750 for the movers, punters. It's the start of favourite. And it all, it, it was, Condos Express friendless, yep. which you might show the graph. Um, Banco firm, steady, looked like it was going to start pretty dominant favourite sort mm. of five minutes out, and then just a big crunch came for Alabama Express. They got this one spot on on a day when they missed a lot of big like big betting moves missed on Saturday. This was the one that really nailed it. And that's it. It was even being just heavily smacked late. Four dollars sixty into a low of three sixty five. We're talking two hundred and sixty odd thousand match there on Alabama Express and especially over the last ten minutes as well. It was just relentless. There was, was a little bit of a go to for the SA visitors. Yeah, little rich boy late just a little, little rich boy for uh, S Fork. Our job. man. I love S yeah. Fork. He rides him well, they run for him. Yep. Um it's run second. Yep. What, what do you reckon that money was? Just because they predicted the ridiculously slow tempo? No, I think it was probably more just a settling position. It was going to be you know, just yep. right behind the leader. Figures weren't too bad previously at, uh, in South Australia. Yeah, so g given they've run such slow time, I'm still really keen to follow this horse anywhere. It, it, the, the, the all average benchmark broken in the 200 sections mm. home are elite. Yep. Horses flying. Will be fresh. Uh, Banco, I think, ca can improve. Yep. Very, very culty. Coat was outstanding though. Yep. What do you make of that as a parade? Uh, look, Coat was pretty sweet, but again, we'll get to probably another horse later on where I think it was the parade of the day, but uh, Condos Express is probably the other horse I want to touch on here as well. Yep, go for it. A uh, little bit soft late, I guess you can say. Went from $5.40 out to seven twenty on the fair. Um, that was just, you know, 18,500 match, so you know, decent money. But Which that was, was a little bit of a theme, yeah. Punners Net. The market's not always right, but it more often than not is, and I trust it. Probably more than most people do, would you say? Oh, I'm big on the market. Yeah. Um, a horse like 
Condos Express and for a stable like the Lambings table, it's, I reckon it's a good indication of what the, how the horse can be run, the, yeah. how the, the tactics they're going to employ. This horse has speed and sits on speed in much faster run races than this. There was no intent here at all. The market told you there'd be no intent. There's a little barrier trial. I wouldn't be marking the horse harshly at all. Yep. You? Yeah, uh, wait for a next race where it seems to get itself into a better spot. Do you think you can use the market as a little bit of a guide to tactics? I think you have to. North Africa, stables. Friday night, J Car. Do you want to talk about that now? Yeah, you might have to edit it, but um, <laughs> that's a horse that's led at its last two starts and the previous starts had a good tempo. Yeah. It was well down in grade. It was the same like benchmark rating, but it was a $100,000 cheaper race, so it's down in grade. Down in grade. So if you go, if you go, Race if you you were doing a 400 meter race against like six year olds, mm. then you go and race against four year olds. Is it going to be faster or slower? Am I actually racing four year olds? If you if you do 400s of footy training with the ones, you're going to go a little bit quicker than if you go with the twos. So surely you'd, you'd, you'd lead on your ear, wouldn't you? You think at Cranbourne where it's on pace, dominated, red hot rail, wouldn't you? I would. I mean, look, if those Fair are the tactics, assume, it was soft early. Mm. It was soft late. And there was zero intent from Jay Carr in the stable. I probably suspect more the stable driven tactics yeah. to try and understand why the horse wasn't sort of finishing off in better races. Lead at all costs. Find the rail, find the wind. Okay, Peter, the big blow. The big blow. Apart from <laughs> apart from you, you want to show the punters your arm there from Saturday night. <coughs> the big blow at Flemington on Saturday. We're gonna look at two. Blossom on snow in race four. This is one of the softest, yeah. softest things I've ever seen. And I started to get like very conspiracy theory here, like this is this is a real hot go, hot hot go. So I deep dived, I looked through the data at punningform.com.au. What'd you find? Nothing. Oh. Nothing at all. The horse went faster, much faster than it's, it went at the previous start. So they were trying. Yep. It sat outside a good speed. Pulled up lame. I don't think anyone knew it was lame. I didn't like it in the yard. I, I, thought, I liked it in the yard. Yeah, I walked all right. Yeah, I hadn't seen it before, so I was just. It didn't walk like a lame horse. No, no, but it was just doing a couple of things. I think sometimes wrong. when they drift like this, people who watch markets and bet all the time like we do can sort of like think, oh, something's gone on here. For, for clarity, for clarity, the last half hour, two dollars seventy-eight as a low, four dollars forty. It closed one hundred and fifty-five thousand matched on it. It was out the gate and friendless and yep. ran accordingly. Um, in that race, it was really good money for uh, Rogue's Point. Yep. And I thought, watching the, the vision, maybe John went too slow on it. But that was probably because of the drift on Blossom on Snow. Well, where'd you have Blossom on Snow? I mapped? had Blossom on Snow crossing and leading, but they yep. went really quick. So yep. I, looking back now, I, would, I wouldn't have mm. expected it to be able to. Um, it's a fascinating race. D-Lane almost fell off the horse, which we'll probably show yeah. you at the start, it's gone to win somehow. It was, what, seven lengths behind them at the start? Yeah. They, whilst they went quick here, John's slowed from like the eight to the six. Yep. He's put the brakes on while the horse is making ground, haven't done anything extra and got a fair bit closer. That's often how they'll set up to swoop. Mm. Um, and that, that horse that won, which was called... Viscosity. Geez, it stuck its head out and chased the line. Yeah. Charlie Sheen stole it, didn't it? It really wanted it and it found it. It was yep. a pretty impressive win. It's good. Uh, big day for that stable. That was a really, really strong effort from that horse. I think rapid romance out of that race is the horse to follow, though. Okay. Anything from you? No. <laughs> Biggest figure from Flemington, Peter, comes from race six. It's a hot race. 400 metres. Yep. Fascinating race. Now, the biggest figure is reflectivity. Have I pronounced that correctly? Yeah. 13.1 above the all-average punting form benchmark. Huge career peak for this horse. Sure. Sat three wide doing it. What are we saying? I don't know what we're saying. I don't know, because this is just an enormous effort, a big performance, and I'm, I'm confused, and I'm sure Michael Poy's confused. He got grilled by the stewards for leading on Odeon, and putting that horse into the race on the fence, covering the least distance, and letting the horse run. Sat three wide the trip here, no cover. Sweet. Too good. No money for it really either. I mean, it was, it was friendless. It was, at, it was at odds, but there was three strong goes in this race. Yeah. Never again. Which will roll the vision. This stops. This stops. This hurt. On a on a, a two week run, 
the movers have been our, our betting has been strong we've been winning just yep through the last little bit and through January but we have had some horrible experiences and this I think this topped it this should have won 17.50 hit a high of 20 closed $9.80 went off a cliff late never again uh, we were on at the top we were on at the very top it jumped really well we'll show that vision just a little bit of lack of intent there from Benny Mellon sort of sort of shuffled one pair further back did have a nice back to follow the eventual winner mm. uh, but then got sort of just lost a bit of momentum as he came into the corner and oh my god that last 100 metres is just I'd prefer it didn't do that because I wouldn't feel so sick. This coming off the back of back in Causeway Girl at 45s and 50s on the fair laid from the yard. No idea. And I find it, I've already heard a few people back in the great TV, Terry Bailey, for calling Causeway Girl home. I thought it won. Everyone around me thought it won. Except that. G'day to Ross Brody. Sots trots. Yeah, he knew. He just thought it didn't win because he was on it. <laughs> um... Palenko and Vongal, I thought, were two good runs in race six, which is a really big race for the day, the, the biggest rating yep. race in the day. Interesting in this race, which I think is a bit of a theme for the day, the, the three horses in the finish and the horses we want to sort of talk about and follow, three wide line. So I think if you're reviewing the meeting in any detail, I think you want to be sort of forgiving of horses which were rails in run on Saturday. Sure. Yep. This is a horse that sat three wide and, and a bunch of them did who savaged the line here. Palenko, if it got... Momentum at the right time could have won easily. It's flying that horse. Uh, anything else? Yeah, we have to talk about Wentwood, surely. Surely. Well, Wentwood looked look like it was off the set of like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. They just found it in the middle of the middle of the bush in the forest. It was a trial spruker, wasn't it? Wild Brumby. Got well, beat up on something in a trial. I don't know exactly what it. Beat I think up. this horse is a really good example of the way the market works at the moment. There's, there's a couple of smarts early who have bet, if they bet, the, the, the corporates, the plastics, who, who don't want to know anything about betting, turn it off. That $4.80 was an outstanding each way price, wasn't it? Oh, hammered. When the hammered spookies early. were out there on the radio. But then it, the, the market's dead until about 10 minutes, 20 minutes before they jump. Yeah. This horse started, what, $13 or something? Yeah, it was uh, $8.40 out to $13, 26000 match. No one really wanted it on the fair it's at all. Completely friendless. Yeah. It travelled in the race, had run of race. I thought I was going to piss in at the 300. Yeah, none of its figures from overseas were over 1,400. Like but it beat Constantinople or something, or a horse. It might be the wrong horse, but it beat a good horse. So that's what they'll... I think this horse can be followed big time, though. It paraded like, with long, long... It looked like you when you got back from <laughs> Perth. A little bit of a trim, you'll be back, just like this horse will. I think if you like Wentwood, you can keep following it. I think it'll improve. Yeah, it'll definitely improve. Um, anything else? No, not from that race. Uh, the fastest last six, four, and 200 metres of the day, Pistol. Yep. Fastest last six and four. Yep. And very and painfully not the fastest last 200 metres was Causeway Girl for Regan Bayless, who I thought pulled their pants down in this race. This is an outstanding ride from the young man. Superb. He's come back from Hong Kong with a new lease of life, hasn't he? He's riding well. Yep. Um, the fastest last 200 metres of the day is obviously Bold Star. Yep. Who looked gone at the 150 and found a way. Yep. Uh, out of that race, the horse I really want to follow is uh, All Too Royal. You liked it before? It was a 1,200 metre horse. It's a 1,000 metre race. It was a poor decision by me to back that horse in this race. I just had the blinkers on. I was too obsessed with the, the way it, it ran at Caulfield. It was not suited at all by the, the, how slow they went. Mm -hmm. I, I anticipated them going slow, but not as slow as they went. It was farcical, the speed they went in race five. But the, the 200 metre increments, all average benchmarks are clocked, and horses in this race clocked closing are that of an elite horse. I, I reckon it's a proper group horse, all too royal, and the second most impressive horse that we'll see come out of this meeting. The hot go, Peter, the hot, hot go, and yeah, it's Victoria, so if we want to get hot, where we've got to go? North Queensland. This isn't Toowoomba, this isn't like Airlie Beach, North Queensland. This is Doombin on a Thursday, race five, Metro Racing. Oh my god. Oh. Can you first just, you, I want you to do a little prep here. Yep. Get the stewards report up. We'll put it up on the screen hopefully. Uh, I, what what part of the stewards report? All of it. Like the, the before and the after. We were, we were sort of implied that there was a notification to change the tactics. What race are we talking about? Race five. <gasps> race five Doombin. Hot go. Hot, hot go. 
There was a well-backed horse. Went up four, but mainly threes. Went into a dollar sixty, was it? Yeah, dollar sixty. I mean, like you'll show the charts, punters. You'll see it on your screen. It jumped to dollar sixty-eight. Betfair starting price. Seat of power is the horse we're talking about. Seat of power. Now, give me some of the tote action. Some of the tote action. So. This is where it's fascinating. This is why it is a hot, hot go. <clears throat> In terms of the winner. The winner. So, as a rule, the Betfair SP will always beat the tote. I'd say ninety. $5.70 for the local tote, $5.80, $4.40 across the three totes. Betfair starting price, $8.80. We're talking about slow hands, the victor there. So it's $8 on the fair, where you've got to bet in your own name as a rule, or the totalizer, the national tote, which would be an outstanding innovation for the whole sport, wouldn't it, to go back in time. Completely and utterly crunched. Let's have a look at Cedar Power, the horse that was dominant favourite, yep. should lead, normally leads, and was slow away and rails and run back back and buried, Peter. Yep, it's coming up now. I've already got it. Disgraceful. Um, Why do you want to have a look at the stewards report, though, Jack? Because uh, traditionally, you'd hope a horse that leads and is then going to not lead, there'd be a notification of change of tactics. Sure. Um, sort of North Africa style on on Friday night there at Cranbourne and then when there's a hot go like this is clearly a hot go and there are there's a horse bet Ferris paying eight four dollars on the tote and then what price we've just shown the other that the favorite was much shorter on the totes and bigger on I confused myself the other way around you'd assume that there'd be something in the stewards support addressing the what, what's happened in this race because something's happened that they've at least looked at it so you can put your mind at rest what have they said regarding the dollar 60 chance nothing it's not even in there no there's no change of tactics there's nothing related to seat of power and race five play on nothing to see here advantage let's keep betting in queensland it sounds good <laughs>